Uh, we are now very pleased to welcome the Chief People and Culture Officer of the London-based Dorchester Collection. He was awarded Human Re Resource Director of the Year by HR Magazine three years ago. He's also the author of Be a People Leader, a sustainable framework for achieving your full leadership potential. He's today accompanied by the Global Director of uh, Learning and Talent at Dorchester Collection. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eugenia Peary and Laura Wigley. Please, please. Phil, you guys okay? Yeah, good to see you here. Coffee, tea? No, oh, good. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> so, so where do we start? Well, I think they were going to actually play a little video first, and then uh, we'll talk Speak first. Speak for yourself. So great. Cue the video, as they say. Extraordinary things happened in 1931. The Empire State Building transformed Manhattan's skyline. August Picard touched the stratosphere. A block of flats became Abbey Road Studios. And elsewhere in London, a vision to create the perfect hotel was finally realized in the Dorchester on Park Lane. Before too long, the Dorchester was already described as groundbreaking, a pinnacle of luxury and ease. But still, we strive for more. Ever more global and audacious, we carry our guests to new countries, iconic locations, fresh incarnations of the perfect hotel. The perfect hotel. Surely an impossible vision where perfect describes no formula beyond the eye of the beholder. But a vision indeed, and one that drives Dorchester Collection forward every day. Because we know the perfect moments. We know the dreams of our guests, our extraordinary guests. The personalities that fill our rooms and write our legacy. The light by which our hotels are illuminated. Each as unique as a fingerprint. Dorchester Collection defines perfect through their eyes. Here we understand that perfect doesn't follow fashion or respect the rules. For Marilyn, it was Bungalow 7 at the Beverly Hills Hotel. For Dali, a second home at the Maurice. For many, it's the wonderful staff, the true family that inhabit our hotels. Perhaps you'll find it in a golden sunset over the roofs of Rome. While for others, perfection tastes simply like our room service vegetable soup. Perfection is different for everyone. And in that knowledge, we thrive. We embrace the artists, the outsiders, and the risk takers. We celebrate those who ignore boundaries and aren't too keen on average. We delight in the daily reinvention of perfection. So whether it's to be seen at Beverly Hills or hide at Bel Air, to dance under Milan's bright lights or find solace in Ascot's deepest baths, to take tea on the promenade or an evening stroll by Geneva's glistening lake, Dorchester Collection is here to witness your perfect moment. Let us tell the story of your extraordinary. Bring us your perfect. Let us make it into your hotel. When you're ready, we'll be waiting. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, first and foremost, thank you very Is much for still having us here left today. To say after that? Well, um, yeah, we're, we're very fortunate. Um, we're, we're quite an actually small company um, from a hotel perspective. We're just 10 hotels and about 4,000 uh, employees across the globe. But we are very fortunate to have this iconic type of hotels and this iconic nature. Um, for example, the Dorchester in London is the largest revenue generating hotel in all of Europe. The Beverly Hills Hotel was actually built and then the city of Beverly Hills was named after the hotel two years later. We operate the uh, oldest pr uh, pa palace hotel in Paris, Le Maurice. So we're very fortunate, so we have this iconic nature. And actually, my colleague and I this morning were talking about this uh, whole idea of product. And she rightly said, uh, you know, for most companies, the product is um, what they're selling or what they're doing. And so most people would think the, in the hotel business, the product is the hotels themselves. But for us, Really, that is extremely important. You know, some guests stay in our hotels and pay 25,000 to 30,000 euros per night to stay in the hotels. But for us, our product is the people. 
And um, this is extremely important to us, and this is why we really take a holistic view to the employee journey and uh, tie that in with the guest experience. And this is really, really key for us. What, um, what we found is um, the key, just make sure that, there we go. The key um, successes that we have seen is really this whole idea that we base everything in our value system. And um, these are values that were created um, organically through the hotel and through this holistic approach where we actually went out to the field and we spoke to the employees. And this was many years ago. We're a very young company. We're nine and a half years old, even though our oldest hotel is 183 years old. And so um, for us, it was about asking the employees, what does an experience mean to you and what does it mean to the guests? And as a result, the values, these five key values of passion, personality, respect, working together in innovation were created. And as a result, we umbrellaed it under this whole idea that we care. And it's keep, keeping it as simple as that and keeping it as, as uh, a message that can be easily understood, no matter what language you're speaking, no matter what culture you're dealing with. And this, I think, what's really been made us successful. Um, for us, uh, again, we're unique. The hospitality industry is um, the service industry. It doesn't always have the best reputation. It's an industry that has very high turnovers, traditionally 30 to 35 percent. One of our hotel averages 3 percent turnover annually, and as a company, we average somewhere in around 15 to 17 percent. So we're considered actually the lowest turnover in the hospitality industry. And we also have the highest engagement. Um, statistically, uh, now we're in our sixth year of well over 90% employee engagement. And I think we do this by, again, taking this really simple approach to our employee values. When you talk about then, as a result, this whole communication um, idea, for us it was this idea that we needed to have a bit of a formula within the company. There we go. And so um, it seems quite basic and quite simple, but you always have to remember when you have colleagues all over the globe that speak, we have 40 different, 47 different languages spoken in our company, and this whole idea about trying to get this single message across, simplicity was key. And so as a result, we created this type of formula, which was based on what we needed to do within the people world to ensure that we had this sustainable framework. The idea is about creating a company that is going to move forward even when you're not there. I hope that we're creating something that, even though we're nine and a half years old, one day we'll be 900 years old. That whole idea. So it's simple with the whole right attraction. You add bespoke development to that. For us, we had to take a holistic approach to employee and guest engagement. So every time we do something, whether it's on the guest side or the employee side, we look at it equally. And then for us, everything has to have this idea of this spark of innovation. And so under all of these different platforms, we have various initiatives and strategies um, that I'll set over to Laura for a little bit. So we've already talked a little bit this morning about journeys, and um, we're quite lucky, I guess, in the hotel world that our guest journey is relatively simple from the point when you, probably before you even start to think about going away on holiday, how do we build that kind of awareness of our brand right through to um, before you come, how we engage with you, your arrival, check-in, your stay, which is obviously the most memorable bit of your break or vacation, and then straight through to staying in touch. So how do we make those guests want to come stay with us again in the future? And as we looked at our formula, it became really apparent that actually our employee journey is no different. We want to start building our brand um, before people have even thought about maybe working in hospitality. And take that through to before they join us, what is the experience that they have that we really mirror everything we do with our guests, with our team members as well. And then with HR, I guess the area that we all tend to focus the most on is what we call the experience or the stay or your employment with a company. But again, making sure that if somebody chooses to leave us for whatever reason, we've got that departure right for them and we stay in touch in the future. So we're starting to build an alumni um, of our team members too. So everything we think about when we're thinking about new projects, new approaches, we're making sure we're bearing in mind this employee journey one, to make sure we get every touch point and we don't just stick with the additional experience um, middle part, but also to make sure we are replicating that guest journey and how we treat our guests with all our team members too. Right, so 
This is great. So communication, <laughs> I understand, is, is important in building a unique employee journey. Why is that? I think it always boils down to everything is about communication. And I've been often heard uh, saying in the organization that sometimes good HR is like good PR. So it is really important how you're communicating to the employees. I think one of the greatest successes that we had in Dorchester Collection, uh, when I joined the company six years ago, I was the first uh, head of HR, if you will, or head of people that we had in the company. And I was recruited at the time to basically look after HR, learning and development, and the basics, I would say, of HR. Within six months, I took over the role of all innovation for the company, I took over all the role of all guest engagement for the company, and I took over the role of all corporate responsibility for the company. And I think this is actually what became the link between what made our people story and our people's successes so relevant in the company. Because as a result, um, and I think all of us can, can see in our organizations, when you make one decision, it actually has this knock-on effect on various different aspects of the business. So what we were finding is by taking these one decisions, they were having these effects versus having to take different decisions through different leaderships and different silos in the organization. So right away, it started to break down those silos. And that's really what made the communication so successful in the company. So well, how, how does the learning and development journey support that? So actually here, I've got some examples of some of the projects that we've done to bring the... Um, to bring the development to life and how we bring the values to life. So this is an overview of our approach to development. And it's something we've created recently in trying to take the values from our organization and say, how will that play out in the experience side? And so I won't talk all through all of this in detail because I could talk for hours on it, <laughs> but there are some few key things to pick out. So things like making sure all our development is realistic. We work in a very guest-centered environment, so how do we make sure everything we're doing is really related back to the business? Making sure we have continuous learning journeys. So we don't see training as you go to the classroom and then there's no follow-up, but actually how do we look at learning as something that you do every day, day in, day out? And so therefore, how do we um, develop our um, platform and approaches to be able to support that? And the other interesting one that came out recently from talking to all our team members is how do we really make this unique for everybody? We have people who've been with us for, or have just joined, and they're graduates, they're really eager to grow their careers. We have other team members who've been with us for 25 years, and they love the company, but their view of development is very different. And so we've really challenged ourselves to say, how can we look and create a journey that everyone can have their bespoke um, and unique experience as they go through? And then to support that, we've also um, defined the different roles. So traditionally, um, I guess hotels are more operational and directive, but we've really redefined. It's our team members' roles to be able to drive their development. And we see our roles as leaders and as the people team to be able to support that journey. So to help them identify what it is. And then for our people teams to be able to create the resources and support to develop through that journey. And this is how we talk about it internally. So we've really tried to make it an approachable um, brand that really clearly says, this is what's in it for you. So this is our commitment to our team. So we talk about it being their future, but we want to create it together with them. And then I have a couple of really quick examples. So the first one is your plan. So this is our approach to um, personal development reviews and development planning. And historically, we used to have, I guess, the traditional performance review where you had competency frameworks, rating scales, and ratings that came out of it. And over the last year, we talked to our team members and we talked to our leaders about what they really wanted to see and what were the important parts of that review for them. And these are the four things that came out. So yes, it's really important to celebrate success. We need to look at the last year, see what everyone did well, and really celebrate that with them. Increase their self-awareness, so everyone wants to know where they can do better, but also recognizing where people's strengths are. And then we moved a lot of the focus to be about their personal aspirations and inspiring their unique goals. And this is where we start to tie in that development aspiration that we talked about in terms of how do we make it unique for you and how do we help you define your own journey. 
And the second example is our academy. So this is the framework that ha houses all our traditional learning, um, but also things like cross-training, so working in different departments, um, supporting coaching, mentoring, um, things like learning on the job, which is actually such a huge part of how everybody in our business learns. And so we've housed them under these four categories. So again, we can continue to talk to our teams about everything we do. So when people join us, becoming an ambassador for DC is so important. So we will spend three days with all our new team members, telling them about our vision, our values, getting to know the company before they even um, step foot and start to meet our guests. It's so important to understand the history and the culture behind the organization. And then we support that with our service training, our technical training, and then also our leadership training too. Right, so how do you adapt given this global culture? Yeah, I think what's um, been fascinating for us is that um, it's been quite the journey and we only speak now when we talk about the future of the company as this whole idea of this evolution of Dorchester Collection. Um, because it's changed so dramatically over the last nine and a half years, and we see especially the next three years with the whole digitalization of the world, the transformation, and we are, our goal, and it's important to understand about our company, is we have no desire to be a large company. So even in our corporate governance and through our ownership, we only plan to be 15 hotels, maybe 18 total in the grand scheme of things. However, we only want to operate Uber, if you will, five-star luxury hotels. So within that self, it is really clear to have that type of vision when you're defining your culture. I think what's also important to understand is that um, what we've learned over the years, and it's quite funny, when I joined and uh, I had to do a, we were just recently did a type of audit on, on how we've done over the last nine and a half years. And over the last uh, five years, just within people and organizational development and culture, we've launched 41 different initiatives. Um, and L41 have achieved success. So we're quite proud of that. We only launched 41 and all 41 succeeded. <laughs> now it seems like a lot, but that being said, I think what was our key to success with the culture is that it was not about there being a race. And we quickly realized that when we launched something in California, it was launched and implemented and already getting metrics within two weeks. And no matter what it was, even if it was just, can you move the book here? It was exactly one year in Italy. And it didn't really matter because they had a different way of doing their culture and a different way of understanding the journey because for them it had to build into their roadmap. And I think this is the key in understanding your journey is that there is no perfect formula. All you can do is stay tried, tested and true and getting people to understand the journey that you're on. And I think this has really been able to support the culture. I was going to say, I think it's also interesting when you... I joined Dorchester Collection around 18 months ago now, and I joined thinking, OK, we've got hotels in a number of different countries, mainly in Europe and a couple in the US. Simple, you just adapt your way to the culture of the country. And actually, you come in and see that because each of our hotels, we encourage them to be iconic, and we encourage them to have their own individual take on things, that then creates their own unique leadership team and how the teams operate. So actually, it's not the number of countries we have, it's the number of hotels. And so about six months in, I thought, great, got this number of hotels. And then you start to think, actually, within their hotels, every same team member is completely different. And so my mindset now is not how do we adapt things for that country or that hotel, it's actually how do we try and make our HR processes in such a way that they can be unique for every single individual mm -hmm. and be adapted and for people to find their own route through with the guidance, but it's very much about individualized approach rather than company-wide, country-wide, hotel-wide. Easy to say, <laughs> more difficult to do, but it's definitely the mindset that I have from thinking now. Right, it's, it's, it's also embedded in your recruitment process. Absolutely, and that's really, really key. I mean, Laura mentioned it earlier, and I know we're coming near to the end of our session. I mean, our longest term employee has worked with the company for 62 years, 
and our youngest employee is 14 years old. So, you know, this is what it's all about. And whether you're recruiting somebody who's been here a long time and recruitment also stays within the employee journey because even once they're in the hotel, you're recruiting them for various tasks. You're recruiting them for various initiatives, very, various projects. So that whole idea about how something is just at one part of the journey, it doesn't really matter because it all filters through at different steps, even in the employee's career. And I think it's really important to understand that, and that as well builds the culture of the organization because it becomes continuous and on learning, and then it speaks to that developmental journey, which is very, very personalized. Right. So, so we have 50 seconds there. You guys have been great. They told me they were very talkative. I'm impressed. You're right in time. But I have a question for you. There are lots of human resource people in this room. What would you like to tell them based on your experience? I guess I would leave it with there. I think... Uh, there is no such thing as HR anymore. Um, I think that uh, it's really important to understand that uh, we're there, we have, a, we have a cause or we have a vision. And I think um, I discovered this early on very to my, I was very fortunate to discover that I was not recruiting people. I was giving people an opportunity to live. By giving somebody, I was a by giving somebody a job, I was giving them an opportunity to buy a home, to live, to buy food, to have children, to go on vacation. And I think that's what's important to understand about what our role is as people professionals. It's not about uh, we're hiring and we're firing and we're doing administrative tasks. We're actually there to provide um, people the opportunity to live and, and have a great life. And that's what's key. Well, thank you very much to both of you for being here. Junior Perry and Laura Wigley, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> See you, Junior. <laughs>